There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Before I cover this stop point in a bit more detail, I want to go over the word which pops up here first in this stop point, which is allotropes. You need to know what an allotrope is. Because remember, you basically need to know every single word that comes in dot points, and allotropes are one of them. So what is an allotrope? Well, allotrope has to do with having a the same element, so it has to be the same element, and it has to have the same state. So two versions of the same element that is also in the same state. And I'll quickly go over what, an example of this. That would obviously be your oxygen gas and your ozone gas. So you can see, if by saying they're gas, uh, gas is the same state, states of matter. So this is the state. It's not liquid, and in this case we don't have liquid oxygen and ozone being gaseous. They're both gaseous, so they're both in the same state, and they're the same element. Here we just have two of them, and here we have three of them. So these are allotropes of oxygen. Now, and the bonding ha happens a bit different. Between oxygen, we have a, co a covalent bond between oxygen molecules, and between co ozone, we have a coordinate covalent bond, which happens between three oxygen atoms. But overall, if we're talking about gaseous oxygen and gaseous ozone, they are allotropes. Right? They are the same element and they are, they are in the same state, as long as we're talking about the gaseous version of them. And this is the coordinate covalent bond. So I mention all this because the dot point itself says compare the properties of oxygen allotropes. So now you should know what an allotrope is. O2 and O3. So this means we're talking about gaseous oxygen and gaseous ozone, not liquid oxygen or liquid ozone. Or in this case, or at least in this case, we're in this what we're going to cover in this video. We are so compare the properties of oxygen allotropes O2 and O3, and account for them on the basis of their molecular structure and bonding. Right, so we're going to cover that as well. So we have to account for the differences based on the molecular structure and bonding. All right, so first I'll quickly go over just some of the actual properties that these have, both their chemical and their physical properties. And then for most of them, I will go through why they have these different properties as well. So oxygen is colorless, especially the gaseous version is colorless. It has a boiling point of 183 degrees Celsius, which means you need to get it down to minus 183 degrees Celsius to turn it from gaseous to liquid. It's less reactive than ozone. It has a lower solubility than ozone, and has a lower density than ozone as well. Whereas ozone, on the other, ha other hand, is a pale blue in color in the gaseous state. It has a boiling point of minus 111 degrees Celsius, which means you need to get it to minus 100, 111 degrees Celsius for it to turn from gaseous to liquid. So that's obviously it has a, a sort of a higher boiling point. It's easier to turn ozone into liquid than it is to turn oxygen into liquid. And also we have it being more reactive. It is a higher, has a higher solubility and a higher density than oxygen. So that is that's their properties. Some of them are chemical, some are physical. So for example, the reactivity obviously has to do with the chemical property. And the other ones, such as density and, and boiling point, these would be examples of physical properties. So I've given you a couple, and the most important ones as well, the most important ones you should know. You don't really need to remember the color of them, but the rest you should know. And but we, still have, we haven't finished the point, we've just gone over the actual properties. So we've compared the properties of oxygen allotropes, ozone, and normal oxygen gas. That's the first part. But the second part says, and account for them on basis of their molecular structure and bonding. We still have to do that part. All right, so let's start with the boiling point. Why does ozone have a sort of lower boiling point than ozone? Well, in that case, we have oxygen which is like so. Remember what boiling point is? In boiling point, you basically have to have, in this case, two oxygen come together and form intermolecular bonds between each other, right? So these bonds have to form between each other to make it into liquid. That's your intermolecular bond as opposed to your intramolecular bond. And types of intermolecular bonds, we have dispersion forces, Dipole-dipole forces, dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonding. Dispersion forces are the weakest of the forces, 
and your hydrogen bondings are the strongest of those intermolecular forces. But between ozone, we only have dispersion forces because the actual molecule, because it's a straight molecule, right, so this is talking about the shape. Because it's straight, you can see here it's straight. That means there is no, it's not, pol it's not, it's not polar. It's, there's no charge. There's no negative or positive charge. And I'm going to go over why that's important with the example of ozone because ozone is not a straight molecule. Right, so oxygen is a straight molecule, so it has no overall charge, which means the only thing that we can make happen are these dispersion forces between molecules. Whereas between an ozone, you can see it's bent. So here it's bent. And that bent gives it an actual charge. So now we have a negative charge on this, these two and a slightly positive charge on the top oxygen. And what that means is that if, for example, we have another one, copy, paste, then we can make this positive, this negative, form a bond. In this case, it would be a dipole bond. This would be a dipole-dipole bond. But a dipole-dipole bond is actually stronger than your dispersion forces. Right, so we have dipole-dipole bond, which you don't have for oxygen. Plus, we can also have more dispersion forces happening, because dispersion forces happen it happens between any atoms. right? So these will have dispersion forces. These will have dispersion forces. But because we have more atoms in ozone than we have in the oxygen, it is also more possibility for dispersion forces. So what I'm trying to get at, get at is that we have simply more types of forces, more types of um, intermolecular forces in ozone than we do in oxygen. And that means that we have to invest more energy to break those bonds. So we have to invest more energy to break the bonds, which is why the boiling point is 111 for ozone as opposed to 183. Because what that means is we need to invest more energy, more heat energy to break the bonds. And that's because there's more different types of bonds and more dispersion forces within ozone compared to between oxygen, right? So between ozone molecules, we've got dipole-dipole, plus we have dispersion forces. In this case, three dispersion forces because we have three atoms within the atom, within the actual molecule. Whereas between, sorry, <clears throat> talking too much. Uh, whereas between oxygen and atoms, oxygen molecules, we only have dispersion forces. There's no charge because it's a straight molecule, which means we don't have any dipole-dipole interactions, right? Now we've explained, or hopefully I've explained well enough, why they have a why oxygen has a lower boiling point, which means it's easier to break these molecules. It's easier. We need to invest less energy, whereas ozone has a higher boiling point, and that means we need to invest more energy. That's because ozone has more bonds, more different type of bonds, and more bonds between the molecules. Right. So why is it less reactive? So reactivity, I'm running out of space, reactivity refers to the intramolecular bonds, right? So boiling point was referring to the intermolecular bonds, and reactivity was referring to the intramolecular bonds. Remember, intra was inside the actual molecule. So inter was between molecules, with intra was inside the molecule. Here we have between oxygen molecules, uh, atoms, so, so the O, I'll just draw it here to make a bit more space. Between these ones, we have a double bond right, between oxygen molecules. And this double bond means that bond is quite strong, this bond here. So it's a pretty strong bond, which means we need to invest lots of energy. Strong bond, and that means we need to have lots of energy invested to break it. Right? So it's not very reactive because we need to actually invest so much energy for them to be able to split apart and react to form something new. So oxygen is not so reactive, especially compared to ozone, because ozone, so I'll draw ozone new again, ozone has one double bond, oops, should draw a different color, and one of these coordinate covalent bonds. And often what we do, because these are, you know, these are, this here is a different bond to this one here. But basically what you can understand or appreciate is that with each of these bonds, it's only worth about 1.5 bonds. So here we have a double bond, that's two, that's two bonds. Whereas each of these is more or less just worth 1.5. So overall, it's a weaker bond. It's between a single and double bond, which means we need to invest less energy. So we need to invest less energy to actually break that bond. And because we need less energy, that means they are more reactive, right? So once we've broken the bond, it's going to react with something else. 
and form a new compound or molecule or whatever else. So ozone, because it has these weaker int intramolecular bonds, is less, it's more reactive, so it's more reactive because that means that once we've broken them, it'll react with something else, whereas oxygen has a double bond and thereby is less reactive because the bond itself is stronger, the intramolecular bond. And so that's this property explained. We still have to cover the solubility. So oxygen has a lower solubility compared to ozone. So what does solubility refer to? Well, often when we talk about solubility, it refers to how well it reacts with water to form, for example, hydrogen bonds, right? So hydrogen bonds occur between the positive end of the hydrogen here. This is, has a slightly positive polar end, whereas this ozone molecule has a slight negative end, right? So we have a negative here and a positive here, and opposites attract, which means they come together to form hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds, this is an intermolecular bond a, between two molecules, and this hydrogen bond is very strong. And the more of these bonds they can form, the more it will be soluble. Right? So ozone can form even up to two of these, or a couple more, which means it's quite soluble. Whereas again, I mentioned ozone has no charge, uh, sorry, an oxygen has no charge. Right? So it's just two O's bonded together, there's no charge, which means water has a hard time to actually make hydrogen bonds because you need to have a negative, negative part, which in this case, in this straight molecule, there is none. So it's very unlikely or less likely for uh, it to bond with water, which means it's less soluble. Right? So oxygen is less soluble because oxygen has less of these negative ends compared to, or these charged ends compared to ozone, which has more of them because of its bent structure. It's lower solubility for oxygen compared to ozone, which has high sol solubility. And also talk about density as well, quickly. Density refers to sort of often it has something to do with weight, so how heavy something is. Now, in this case, we have oxygen, which has two atoms inside its molecule, right? So its atomic mass would be, atomic mass is how much, how heavy it would be. Each of these is 16, so 16 times 2, that would be 32. I don't even need a calculator for that. And then the other one, so ozone, would have three oxygens. So its atomic mass would be 16 times 3. And I better not get this wrong. That would be 48. Yep, that should be 48. So you can see ozone is simply heavier than oxygen, which means it also has a higher density because density has something to do with kind of the atomic mass of the actual molecule. All right, so color is not that important. You don't really need to know why it has different colors, and if, you, if, I'm, if I'm honest, I don't even know why. It, one is colorless and the other one is pale blue. But what you should know is you should know, you should be able to understand the these different properties, so you should understand the boiling point of oxygen being um, lower than for ozone, the reactivity being less for ozone than for oz uh, less for oxygen than for ozone, you should know that the solubility is less for oxygen than for ozone, and the density is less for oxygen and for ozone, but you shouldn't just know that, you should also know why in terms of, so account for them in terms of their molecular structure and bonding. And we talked about, for example, that the boiling point was different because there's more dispersion forces and dipole-dipole forces in ozone than there are in oxygen. We said that the reactivity is different because oxygen has stronger intermolecular bonds, so the bonds within the actual molecule, than ozone, which has these coordinate covalent bonds, which are slightly weaker which means once they, broke, once they break, then ozone can form new compounds, and that's what reactivity is all about. We said that solubility was lower for oxygen than for ozone, and the reason being is because water needs to form these hydrogen bonds, which you can form quite easily with ozone to make it soluble, whereas it can't form that well with oxygen molecules, because oxygen molecule is a straight molecule, which means it has no charge, and that makes hydrogen bonding quite hard. And we also talked about lower, lower, the lower density of oxygen compared to ozone, and that was due to the, the weight itself. So atomic mass of 32 for a O2 molecule, and atomic mass of 48 for a ozone molecule. So if you have the same amount of molecules, then you would have more mass for the actual ozone, which gives it a high density as well. But hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.